Howdy, y'all. It's Demetrius Villa from the High Speed Rail and Road Club. And to answer your question, why am I dressed up as a cowboy? Well, it's because the episode you're watching right now is on the Texas Central Railway Project. And I'm super excited for this episode because I'm a big fan for this project. So strap on into your saddles and let's get ready for this 205 mile an hour ride. Now we're going to go ahead and call Texas the fastest state in the union. Not only does it have the factory that produces the world's fastest cars, not only does it have the only Formula One track in the United States, but it's now about to have the country's fastest trains. And I'm pretty sure you can park your horse at any of them. Now, to get between Dallas and Houston, you have two options. The nearly three hour flight or the four hour plus car drive. And don't ask how long by horse. And with the Texas economy booming and a population soaring to make it the second most populated state in the nation, those figures are likely to get worse too. The solution? Meet Texas Central Railways, a private company that says in the near future of 2021, you'll be zipping in between the two cities in only 90 minutes. Now, why am I super excited about this? Well, some of you may remember that a couple years ago, I proposed a plan that the United States could work together with Japanese companies to bring the bullet trains over here to the U.S. and adapt it for our use. I mean, after all, the Japanese make loads of cool things like TVs and PlayStations and, of course, the bullet trains. So that's what actually Texas Central is doing. They're actually having a partnership with the Central Japanese Railway Company. And there's no coincidence of Central the name in the operation. And for years, the Central Japan Railway Company has been trying to get their train into the U.S. Now, they have the perfect chance. So the route will be 240 miles from the city center of Dallas to the city center of Houston. With the third stop that may come out later in College Station, Bryan area, which is where Texas A&M University resides. Now, it isn't the first time Texas thought of an idea like this. Back in the 80s, there was a plan to do the same sort of thing. The only difference was that the proposal was state funded. You know, taxes and federal loans, that sort of thing. And when you're talking about the state of Texas and taxes, that, that doesn't bode well in the political realm. So, well, they shot it down. Oh, and while we're at it, let's not forget about Southwest Airlines. Yeah, they had a big hand in that too. Now it's a different story. It's a private company that's actually making the deals, and they themselves even paid for an environmental impact study to be done by the EPA. None of our taxpayer money was spent on it. This means they're really serious about it. Just like all aboard Florida. Trust us, we love when companies get serious about high speed rail. And this is the train. Well, technically a model of the legendary Japanese N700 high speed train. And the variant that Texas Central is eyeballing is the shiny new top of the line N700i that is capable of 205 miles an hour. The N700 train only releases one twelfth of the equivalent carbon dioxide emitted by a Boeing 777 commercial airliner. Since HSRAC is based in Florida, it gives us the perfect excuse to compare Texas Central with all aboard Florida. And the two are actually very similar. Both consist of building a 240 mile route, both are private companies, both claim that their project will add 10,000 jobs to the economy. They're both working with the best companies in the industry, and they connect the two largest cities in their respective states. Of course, with comparisons, there are contrasts. Texas will be using an electrified Shinkansen system. Florida will be using higher speed clean diesel. Texas's N700 can move at a top speed of 205 miles an hour. Florida's chargers at 125 miles an hour. Florida's project is $2.5 billion, while the more ambitious Texas project is projected to be $10 billion. All aboard Florida also owns the tracks 
that are existing already. Texas Central is still buying for rights on some portions of their proposed route that they are building. And speaking of the route, some portions happen to be going through other people's land. But the company has already expressed interest and sincerity with working with the landowners. Now, Texas law states that property can be taken by a governmental entity or private entity authorized by law to do so, which Texas Central, being a rail company, is. They are and have been taking the nice guy route by actually working together and making deals with farm and landowners so everyone can be happy. A hundred miles of the route is also poised to be elevated as well, so cows, cattle, and other critters can crawl underneath with plenty of headroom. Well, cowboys and cowgirls, we hope you all enjoyed this little video because if you did, we'd appreciate it if you please subscribe to us by clicking this button on the top right corner, somewhere around here. As always, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.